All right. Hey, guys, how are you? Sorry, you could hear the sound in the background. Glory to the Jesus Christ. I was busy on Discord. I was on Discord. You guys, like I said, if you don't see me live stream, you'll find me on Discord if I'm not writing or studying. Because, you know, as Christians, we need to spend a lot more time praying, worshiping our God, worshiping the Lord Jesus, fasting, studying the word, meditating on it. So if, uh, if I'm not on social media, well, you know, hopefully by the grace of God, I'm doing what I'm supposed to. I pray and not doing stuff I shouldn't be doing in Jesus' name. But if I'm on social media, if you don't see me on the live stream, I'll be on Discord because we have some excellent sessions. Like today, I've been on Discord for a while, and we had some excellent discussions. We had a discussion on revelation and the symbolism and the imagery showing the triune God, Father appearing visibly, the Son appearing visibly, the Holy Spirit appearing visibly. And thank the triune God, thank the Lord Jesus Christ, our brother, Protestant believer, recorded it. There's the link to Discord. And I'm not the only one. You got a bunch of sharp, spirit-filled, sold-out Christians who love Jesus Christ, who are very knowledgeable. And some of them used to be former Muslims. So join Discord. There's the link. Thou shall not pontificate gave you the link. And he's one of those sharp, sharp young men. A young man, sharp, loves Jesus Christ, spirit-filled, who's zealous for the glory of Jesus Christ. And there are others. Some of we, we have, we have a sister named Amam. We have someone called Daughter of Christ. We have ex muslim We got a lot of them present. People who love Jesus. Join them, fellowship with them. Now, remember, it's a family. It's a family atmosphere. We're brothers, sisters in Christ. So sometimes it gets heated. Sometimes we fight. We shout like brothers and sisters do. But we reconcile because we are of one spirit. We have one Lord Jesus, one spiritual head, and we're one spiritual body, the body of Christ. Even first and last is there. Usually he's the last one to come and the first to leave. So there he's last and first. <laughs> All right. Guys, you may be in for a treat. You may be in for a treat. A modalist heretic, another agent of the devil, modalist heretic, who perverts the scriptures to make God something he's not, may be joining me on Skype for another impromptu discussion. So I'm waiting for him. He was supposed to contact me now. Pray that the Holy Spirit will fill me, that if he's gentle, I can be gentle in destroying his blasphemies and lies because we want to win them to Jesus Christ. It's not just winning arguments, win them. If they're receptive and sincere, we want to reach them by the power of the Holy Spirit. But if they're hardened in their blasphemy, then we chasten and rebuke them so they don't deceive anyone from the true God. Because we love the Father, we love the Son, the Lord Jesus, we love the Holy Spirit. Yeah, well, modalism is the belief that there's only one divine person who can appear in different ro roles and different modes, right? So he's the father in the Old Testament, appears as the son in the New Testament, and manifests as the Holy Spirit. There are varieties of modalism, nuances of modalism, because he said, I'm a unique. My belief in modalism is unique. Yeah, we'll see how unique you are, right, in Jesus' name. Anyway, I'm starting a new series, God willing. Triune God willing, Father willing, the Lord Jesus willing, Holy Spirit willing. All the series I began will be ongoing series until I feel, by the grace of God's Spirit, I've done a sufficient job on a particular topic. They're archived on YouTube. Re-listen, re-re-listen. Used information for the glory of Christ. So I want to start another new series. The new series here is Sunni Islamic Beliefs Critique, part one. There's going to be more than one part, but I'm going to make it beneficial for Christians. So a lot of people see that title. Muslims may come in because of the title, but some Christians say, well, I'm not interested. Yes, you should be interested. Two reasons. Number one, you need to know about this religion because you need to witness to Muslims, pray for Muslims, and fast for their salvation. Be ambassadors of Jesus Christ our Lord it's because they're in darkness, they're deceived, they need the message of salvation. Number two, in my criticism of Islam, I'm going to connect it with the Holy Bible, with God's true word, the Holy Bible. So you're going to learn more about your faith, or you're going to be reminded about your faith and sharpened in your faith. So I'm going to be killing two birds with one stone. Not just talking about what Sunni Muslims believe, but then critiquing it from a Christian perspective, from a biblical perspective, because the Bible is God's word, the only true revelation of the true God. And scripturated and preserved by the true God, not the Quran. 
So you're going to benefit. So invite people, invite them, right? So you're going to learn. I promise you, it's going to help you grow in your faith, understanding scripture, or remind you of what you already know and reinforce those beliefs for the glory of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we love you, Father. Lord Jesus, we love you, though, un unfortunately, fallen vessels who struggle with sinful passions, we don't love you perfectly. Give us the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome our flesh, crucify our flesh, walk in the life of the Spirit, to love you perfectly, to worship you, to adore you, to cling to you, Lord Jesus. Cover us by your blood. Cleanse us in your blood, Lord Jesus. Purify us in your blood. Purify, cleanse. Wash our loved ones in your holy blood, the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> in my case, my daughters, even their mother, wash them, cleanse them in your blood, Lord Jesus. Seal them, seal us by your spirit, because we love your spirit. We are in love with your spirit, and we need your Holy Spirit. Without your spirit, we can't do this. So, Father, please, Lord Jesus, please, Holy Spirit, please, teach us how to worship you. Teach us how to pray, how to sing your praises. Teach us how to live for you, how to love you to know you, to know your word and live it out and proclaim it and even die for your word, the Holy Bible, your voice. And I ask, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask for the power of the Holy Spirit. Bless this session. Save me from error and confusion, even representing Islam. Please, Lord, not to misrepresent it, to speak clearly and accurately and enable me by the Holy Spirit to recall all these facts, all these details, and interpret them perf perfectly, Father, for the glory of the Lord Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Have your way in this session. Guide this conversation. And Lord, grant everyone the ability to understand these topics and use them to see every Muslim knee bow and every Muslim tongue confess Jesus Christ is the Lord, Yahovah, to your glory, Father. Something they only can do by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit uses the body of Christ as his mouthpiece, as his hands and feet to reach them. Because Christ came to save creation. And Muslims are his creation. Jesus created them. And he created them for his glory, his pleasure, for his will. Give us the grace to be used by the Spirit to show them. Jesus is the reason why they exist. He is the Lord who loves them. And Muhammad was an agent of the devil to deceive them, Father. Please use this. Bless us, Lord. Fill my lungs and my chest and my throat with the breath of life. And make the sound of my voice pleasing to the ears of your servants. And bring them in droves, Lord to this session and bless them to understand and save us from attacks of the enemy and strengthen the internet connection, Lord. We need all these blessings and have, help us to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth in this time where people are panicking and afraid more of the coronavirus than the God who is supreme over all viruses. Help us to glorify and not shame you during this time. We love you, Father. Lord Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. In Jesus' almighty name. Everyone good? Everyone good? Where is the love? All right. Why was that retracted? Who retracts these messages? Message retracted. Jojo said something good. She said, where's light? There's no darkness. But then, and I noticed that when it says message retracted, does that mean the person retracted their message or one of the mods? Yeshua, you're out of touch, bro. I've been here since February 15. Glory to the triune God. Where do you think I'm at? I'm in my dungeon. Amen, Father, Son, Spirit, and Jesus. Okay, hopefully we'll get a good crowd, man. This past four days, man, we've, we've gotten to 170. And folks, guess what? Guess what? After I'm done with this, if that modalist heretic shows up, right, we'll have an impromptu discussion. After I'm done with, with this, because we're all quarantined and we're stuck at home, we got nothing else to do, I can do a live Q&A with open Skype. So you can call in with your questions. Are you up for that after this? Maybe still early for some people. It's a Sunday, even though people are having church at home. You guys up for that? After this, God willing, if the Lord Jesus permits, live Q&A, open Skype. You can call in. What's up, sister? How are you? God bless you. All right. If we're ready to begin, well, should I get something to drink? I may do that. All right. Sorry. I'm just thinking, should I? Okay. Yesterday was my junk food night. Oh, boy. May God give me the grace to be disciplined to get back on, on track. Too late for you, Andir Yilmaz, then sacrifice sleep. Why are you sleeping? You're not working. No need to sleep. Okay. Now, let's define some terms. Sunni Islam, Sunni Islamic beliefs critique. Now, why did I say Sunni Islam? Guys, 
I'm going to kill two birds with one, one stone. And I promise you, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you're going to learn even about your own faith or <clears throat> be reaffirmed in things you know. Because I'm going to go into the Bible and examine Islam in the light of the Bible. So don't think it's just Islam. I'm trying to make it beneficial for even those who don't witness the Muslims, even though we need to. Okay. Why Sunni Islamic beliefs critique? Why? Because much like Christianity and Judaism, Islam comes in a variety of flavors, some more orthodox than others. Just like in Christianity, you'll have Roman Catholicism and variations of Roman Catholicism, Orthodox Church, variations of the Orthodox Church, the Coptic Church, you know, the Miaphysites, the Monophysites, the Diath, you know, Physites, <clears throat> Monothelitism, Diathelitism, Nestorian Church, Protestant churches, and various flavors of Protestant churches, right? The Baptists and various flavors of Baptists and Presbyterian. It doesn't end. You want me there? You have varieties and varieties of so-called Christian groups, sects. And then among this umbrella we call Christianity, imagine Christianity is an umbrella. <laughs> Underneath the umbrella, you also have heterodox, heterodox groups, heretical groups, cults. Joe's Witnesses, the Mormons, right? And you name it, right? Black Hebrew Israelites, that, you name it, doesn't end. Similarly, similarly with Islam. In Islam, you'll have the Sunni Muslims and a variety of flavors of Sunni Islam. You have the Salafis, uh, Salaf Asaleh, Salaf Asaleh, right? What the Westerners call Wahhab, Wahhabism, Wahhabis. Then you have those Sunni Muslims who are not quote-unquote Salafis, but they would identify either as Asharis or Maturidis. And Ashari and Maturidi, the beliefs are quite similar. They're interchangeable, right? Athari, those are the ones that would pretty much be the Wah Wahhabis. And then you have Shiite Islam, Shia Islam. And in Shia Islam, you have the Twelvers, and then you have heretical groups among the Shia, like <clears throat> Ismailism or Alawi, and then you have those Muslims who are Quran-only Muslims. And then you have the, quote-unquote, heretical, heterodox groups, like the Nation of Islam. And it doesn't end. You with me there? It doesn't end. Exactly, Abdul Halaj. God bless you. God bless every one of you. It doesn't end. So it's very hard to talk about Islam, because not only is Islam, like Christianity Judaism, very complex in that you have varieties of Islam, some more orthodox than others, the dominant sect of Islam is Sunni Islam, and the second largest sect is Shia Islam. Roughly 85% of the 1.7 billion Muslims would identify as Sunni Muslims, even though they may have no idea what Sunni Islam is. Are you with me there? About 85%, give or take. No one knows the exact approximation. There's about 1.7 billion Muslims worldwide. Some would say 1.6 billion. Okay, whatever. About 85% of them would identify as Sunni Muslims. So that's the largest sect, largest branch. The second largest sect would be Shia Islam. We can talk about the differences in a future session. But since the majority of Muslims are Sunni, and since the majority of Muslims that I have interacted with have been Sunni Muslims, because you don't find Shia Muslims translating their sources into accessible languages as much as you do with the Sunni Muslims. You want me there? It's not buffering. We're okay, Stephen. Don't trip. Get out of your universe. Everyone with me there? The majority of Muslims that you interact with in the West and on social media are Sunni Muslims. Sunni Muslims. And the Sunni Muslims from very early on started translating their primary sources into English. Sahil Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Sunan Abu Dawood, Ibn Majah, Tirmidhi. They're now translated in English. And because of the gift of the Internet, they're now online. For free, here, let me get you the link. www.sunnah.com The major collection of narrations of Sunni Islam are online for free, right there. For free. We used to have to buy the hard copies, and now it's all being downloaded for free. Or uploaded, whatever you want to say. So, okay, right there. Okay, so... Most of my interactions have been with Sunni Muslims. Most of the Muslim debaters are Sunni Muslims. Most of the Muslim 
intellectuals in the West are Sunni Muslims. But now the Shia Muslims are rising to prominence. Now they see the necessity to preach their version of Islam and translate their sources into English. And a lot of Sunni Muslims are becoming Shia Muslims. Now, with that said, because of my interactions with Muslims, deal primarily with Sunni Muslims, I'm going to focus on Sunni Islam for two reasons. Number one, I have studied the Sunni sources. When I say Sunni sources, they're Hadiths, the Sirah, right? Number two, Islam is a comprehensive way of life. It's not just religion. Islam governs every part of a Muslim's life, socially, politically, economically, militarily, maritally, you know, marriage, <clears throat> religiously. It even tells you how to go to the bathroom. So even in, in Islam, with all these variety of Muslims, variety of Islams, you have the fact that Islam is all-encompassing, it's comprehensive, it dictates every part of your life, so that for me to be talking about Islam in general is beyond my ability because that means I would have to spend all my life just studying Islam and the varieties of Islam, which means that I won't have time to study my own faith tradition and grow in my own faith tradition. So I limit myself to Sunni Islam because even with Sunni Islam, I don't know all the idiosyncr idiosyncrasies, all the nuggets, all the ins and outs of Sunni Islam, let alone all the varieties of Islam. Are you with me there? I know Sunni Islam enough to know its faults and show its faults and interact with Sunni Muslims using their sources against them. But I'm by no means a scholar of Sunni Islam, let alone a scholar of Islam in general. So I want to stick with those areas of Islam that I do know and I'm qualified to critique by the grace of God's spirit in light of God's true word, the Holy Bible for the glory of Jesus Christ. Because I don't like to speak about a religion I'm not well informed about. That's why you won't hear me speak about Hinduism or Buddhism. You with me there? That's why you won't hear me talk about traditions that I have not studied. And even with Islamic tradition, that's why you're going to see I limit my discussion to Sunni Islam. Because I know Sunni Islam enough to show its faults and debate Sunni Muslim scholars. But I'm not a scholar of the Sunni tradition. And I can't be a scholar of Islam in general and the varieties of Islam because that will require all my time and energy studying Islam. But my goal as a Christian is not to study Islam. It's to study my Bible, know my Bible, and then live it out for the glory of God. You need to be a scholar of your own faith. Know your Bible. Have no doubt it's God's word. Dig deep into it. Pour into it. Understand it by the power of the Spirit. Then live it out as an expression of your love for the God of the Bible. Because the Bible is his word and the God of the Bible is real. Right? Wow, the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. So I just wanted to qualify that. Everyone with me there? Everyone with me so far? That's by way of introduction. Trusting the Spirit to protect me from error and anoint me to bless you. For the glory of Jesus Christ. And I promise you, when I'm done discussing the main articles of faith of Sunni Islam, you know what you're going to be doing? You know what you're going to be saying and doing? You're going to be scratching your head. You're going to be saying, how in the world can anyone believe this garbage? How in the world can anyone believe this nonsense? How in the world can anyone believe this book? How in the world can anyone follow, follow this false prophet? I guarantee you. Skyscraper. A Christian should learn the biblical languages before a Christian learns Arabic. If you're going to take the time to learn Arabic, why don't you take the time to learn Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek? Right? So that's when you tell me how much should a Christian learn Arabic, well, it doesn't hurt. Obviously, if you know Arabic, can read Arabic, then it'll help you learn read the Quran in Arabic. But why would you take the time and energy Studying Arabic, when that time and energy can be spent learning the languages of your Bible. Now, if you're able then to study Arabic, the Arabic of the Quran, fine. But not at the expense of learning the biblical languages. Right? 
not at the expense of learning the biblical languages. Now, if you're an agnostic or an atheist, then yes, study Arabic, the Arabic of the Quran, to know the Quran in its original language. But you're not an agnostic, you're not an atheist. You are slaves of the Lord Jesus Christ, born again, spirit-filled, children of God the Father. And your duty is to know your Father's voice, understand your Father's voice, and live out what your father's voice tells you and your father's voice is the bible that's your revelation to know your god and love him and serve the lord jesus christ right brother has a point is that clear is that clear uh sample I'm trying to figure out why would you say most Muslims would dispute my claim when I just told you, speaking to a Christian, in levels of priority, your chief priority should be to know the language of the Bible. So let me sample. You're tempting me to block you, brother. Even your name, I think it's, it's prophetic because I'm going to end up blocking you. You just asked me a question, Skyscraper. I answered skyscraper and then sample you're chiming in and you're telling me, well, most Muslims would dispute me. Really? No, duh, I'm shocked. My goodness, a Muslim disputing me? We're starting it again. Guys, are you shocked a Muslim would dispute you because you don't know the Arabic of the Quran? As if the Muslims you interact with, most of them, know the Arabic of the Quran, right? And even those who know the Arabic of the Quran will tell you that the Arabic of the Quran is so deep that there's multi-layered meanings to every word, which is why if you read a commentary by a Muslim scholar commenting on the Arabic Quran, he'll tell you that this verse can mean this and that this scholar held this opinion, but someone else destroy buffering in Jesus' name, Ya Alayhi. Ramos, I'm going to now show you you're a slave of Jesus, and I'm going to block you. Hold on. Luke 17, 7 to 10. Ramos, you're going to leave. You're not coming back to my page. I'm going to show you that Jesus calls you his slave. You're not just a slave. You're more than that, but then you're going to leave, and do not come back to my page. Luke 17, 7 to 10. Candence, let me deal with him. Because, you see, this is, again, people pontificating in ignorance, thinking they know the Bible. Luke 17, 7 to 10. Will any one of you who has a servant plowing or keeping sheep say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and recline at table? This is Jesus speaking. Okay. Will he not rather say to him, prepare supper for me and dress properly and serve me while I eat and drink and afterward you will eat and drink? Does he thank the servant because he did what was commanded? So you also, when you've done all that you were commanded, say we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. So now Jesus just said, you don't know what you're talking about. You need to go. Block him. I don't need chiefs here. Chiefs who think they know. Because if you think you know, start your YouTube channel. Start teaching. Please block him. Okay. Now, with that said, with that said, are we back on page now? No distractions in Jesus' name. No distractions. Because when you distract me, people get distracted. And then I shortchange them. You guys know the rules. Let me repeat it again. No chiefs here. No pontificating. Hear what I have to say. Take what I have to say. Study it and ask the Holy Spirit to show you where I'm wrong, where I'm right. And then where I'm right, absorb it. Make it second nature to you and you teach it to others. Okay? Just want to make sure. No matter how many times I tell people, stop pontificating because when you make an error... I notice it and I have to correct it. And I don't want to do that. Right? Okay. We got, by the way, the modalist, the heretic is here. You guys ready? Can I change gears and school this modalist heretic? This agent of the devil, he's here. You guys mind? Do you mind? He's here. He just contacted me on Skype. Who's ready? Another impromptu debate with another agent of the devil. Now pray in Jesus' name. I can destroy his argument and win his heart. You ready? Protestant believer, first last. You guys ready? Okay.
We may have to retitle this, but then I'll start another session again. Guys, if we're quarantined and locked indoors, I'm going to do more than one session today. In Jesus' name, if the Lord wills. Let's begin the barbecue. And remember, I want to destroy his arguments so I can win his heart. But if he's persistent in his blasphemy, we'll send him on his merry way. You're on. We're on live streaming on my YouTube channel, and we're recording this. Oh, it's the awesome. Man. Hopefully, am I uh, visible? Am I yes, audible? Yes. You're very young. You're very young. I'm old enough to be your father, which is a tragedy. Why is that a tragedy? Uh, don't worry about it. We'll just get to it. Are you ready now? Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You have your own weird form of modalism. You suggested so. In the New Testament. Who is Jesus in respect to the Father? So let's begin. Who is Jesus, the human Jesus, in respect to the Father? In the New Testament. So uh, make it clear. So Yeshua is Yeshua is the Father. So Yeshua's on earth and he's the Father on earth. We're talking about the New Testament. So Yeshua, even though you can say I'm, Jesus. I'm sorry, we're having a bit of a problem. All right, hold on. Get your connection going, buddy. We're having a little bit of a connection problem. Not on my part. It's on your part. Um, All right. Get your connection going. I'm usually pretty fine with that. Yeah, my connection is fine. It's been working perfectly. I'm, I, yeah. I'm, I'm all connected. Okay. So uh, well, let's repeat. Um, Let me I'm ask sorry, my question. I missed what you said. Yeah, yeah. Here's the question. So Yeshua, even though you can say Jesus, because the New Testament is not written in Hebrew, and speaking Hebrew doesn't give you magical powers, but Yeshua, Jesus, in the New Testament, on earth as a man is the Father, right? Is that what you said? On earth. I'm sorry. I couldn't. I didn't catch what you said. You just said you Jesus said is the Yeshua Father. On Jesus earth. is the Father. So when Jesus was on earth in the New Testament, he wasn't in Mars. He was on earth. He was in Israel, Jerusalem. And he was in <clears throat> Canaan. Not Canaan. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, yeah, anyway. The Jesus that was on earth. Yeah, it was in the land of Judea. The Jesus that was on earth. Yes. He's the father. Um, to put to put simply, yes. How? Um, I'm not exactly Explain sure it. how you want me to answer the question no. in respect to Explain the father. Explain it the way you believe it. Explain it the way you believe it. How is he the father on earth? Okay, because the father being the uh, full glory of yod -Heh vav -Heh here we go again chose it chose to bring himself and make himself into flesh okay. and so he he emptied himself of his glory and he entered into the world as flesh mm -hmm. as yeshua so that is the father then that's the father on earth yes the father is yeshua the father was in the, the flesh, the human flesh, because yes. obviously we had a uh, flesh born of a virgin, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, but inside, like everyone else, everyone has a spirit inside of them that causes them to be alive and living. Inside was the Father. Okay. So, did Jesus have a human spirit? A human spirit? Uh, I don't see any scripture that says... Uh, whether or not he had a human spirit, so you would have to show me if he did. If no, there I don't is need to show you. A human spirit. No, I don't need to show you. I'm not. I'm not sure. What, I'm not sure what a human spirit is. A, a spirit is okay, spirit. Well, human is human. Okay, when flesh you is die, flesh, spirit is spirit. So can, I don't think that there is such Yoshi, a thing as a human Yoshi, spirit. Yoshi, Yoshi. I don't have a human spirit. Yoshi, don't talk over me because I'll shut you down. Listen, I know you're nervous. Calm down. You don't have a human spirit. Then what's animating your body? A spirit. And is it human a, is human. a dog spirit? Flesh. Is it a dog spirit? Is my spirit a dog spirit? Yeah, because you said you don't have a human spirit. So what kind of spirit do you no. have? I've got the spirit of the living God in me. So before you had the spirit of the living God in you, you had no spirit? You were hollow? Before I had a, before I had the spirit of the living God, I was in a degenerate spirit We're not talking man. about your sinfulness. Um, I'm talking about do you no, have... No, you show me a scripture where it says human spirit. I don't, right, that's uh, I don't need term. to. I don't need to. I want you to show me a uh, verse where Jesus says, "I am the Father." 
Jesus in the New he Testament, says, I am the Father. No, no, no. Where he said, listen, you answer directly because I'm going to play your game and embarrass you. Show me in the New okay. Testament where Jesus in the gospel says, I am the Father. It's the exact words. That's the game you're playing, a silly game that I'm going to embarrass you with. Show me where he says, I am game. the Father. Those words while he's on earth. On earth, he says, I am the Father. Say it. Quote me. Quote me. Come on. Quote you. What you say what? Where Jesus, when he's on earth with the disciples, says, I am the Father. Those exact words. Because remember, you said you're going to stick with biblical language. Show me where he says, I am the Father. Those exact words. You're not his Lord. He doesn't say things exactly how you want him to say it. Oh, but wait, 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 wait. Yoshi, Yoshi. Yoshi. You told you to just the, told me you just to told me Yoshi you just told me show you yeah. where it says human spirit see I just busted your argument don't play the game where you ask me to quote precise words in a text because I'll flip it on you and embarrass you let the Bible speak in the way the Bible speaks so now let's come okay, back to are the you issue. telling me are you telling me I can only use the New Testament no I didn't say <laughs> you can only use oh, the New okay. Testament in reference to Jesus yes because okay. the Old Testament you're assuming the Old Testament that there's only yeah. one person who's the father. And I'm going to now show you you don't know the Old Testament. Are you ready for that? No. I, well, I'm going – if I can use the Old Testament too, I will show you a scripture that right. says that uh, Yeshua – Yeah, Isaiah 9 verse 6, right? the father. Isaiah 9 6? What's that? Isaiah chapter yeah, 9 yeah, verse 6? Exactly. You sure you don't? Exactly. You sure you want to go there? Because I want to save you the embarrassment. Absolutely, I would. I, I would love to go there. Okay, actually, but you sure you want down. me to? Because I want to save you the embarrassment. That's what it's I'm actually Isaiah nine five in my Hebrew Bible. But yes, because yeah, you they, think speaking they, Hebrew is a magical language. I know it's uh, the Jewish is. Well, actually, it's the original. So yeah. Okay, like, read, read, for, read, it oh, no, read it for me in Hebrew. Hold on, wait, wait. Read it for me in Hebrew. Read it in for me in Hebrew. Read Isaiah nine five in Hebrew. Let me get there. Yeah. Read it for me in Hebrew. I, 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 I'm I old school uh, books, so I do have to kind But of read it for me in Hebrew. Through. Yeah, yeah. Isaiah 9. Verse well, five. for me, it's 9 5. Yes. Ki eled yulad lo anu ben niten lanu vetihi ha misha al shifmo vayikashmo pele yoetz el gibor aviyed sa shalom. Now, what does aviyed mean? Okay, Aviad is a conglomeration of two words. Yep. So Avi, which is father, and Ed, okay. which means literally in Hebrew means still, but is used in the Hebrew language to mean uh, everlasting. Okay. So what is his, uh, what Leolam translate? Is I know forever. the Hebrew. Ba'ed is. Yeah, I know the Hebrew. Okay. Translate it for me, Aviad. Translate Aviad for me. What does it mean, literally? Father of everlastingness. Okay, now, where does it say he's God the Father? How many fathers are there? Everlasting fathers. Well, it's not everlasting fathers. How many, father. fa you, hold on. How many everlasting fathers are there? First, let me correct you. You just admitted it's not everlasting father. It's father of everlastingness. There are three persons who are the father of everlastingness. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so is the, fa is the Son the Father of everlastingness? He is with the Father and the Spirit. All three of them are. Is he the Father of everlastingness? If I repeat myself a third time, I'm going to embarrass you. I just said he is with the Father and the Spirit. All three are. Verse 6 is speaking directly about the Messiah, no? Yes. Who's, who's denying okay. that? Okay. It says that verse 6, we're talking directly about the Messiah, yes. says that he will be called yeah, the father of everlasting. Yoshi, are you I'm hearing me or no? I'm, I'm doing more of an exact from the Hebrew language. Yeah, but are you it, hearing it me? Are you, Yoshi, are you hearing me? Father. Are you hearing me? Okay. Because uh, I just said, don't repeat something we've already agreed on. The Messiah is the father of everlastingness, but he is so in union with the father and the spirit. You still haven't proven that passage shows he's God the father. Since you read Hebrew, go to Isaiah 54, verse 5 for me. Go to Isaiah 54, okay. verse 5. Go on. So don't repeat a although point you're, that I've already you're, you're simply, Although you are simply, uh, one more time the verse. Isaiah, Isaiah 54, uh, verse 5. 54, verse 5. Yeah, now, maybe in your, because it's a Jewish translation, maybe verse 4. Yeah, right, yeah. So just double check. Yeah, 54... Abdul Halid, do you like how this guy's trying to read the Hebrew and bu uh, butchering it? 
of the manage? Well, I've actually been studying since no, I was No, it's okay, bro. I'm not talking Jewish, to you. So. Yoshi, don't be upset. I care about you. I'm talking to my friend here. Just go ahead. Isaiah 54, verse 5. Now, it may be 4 okay. there. I don't know, but go ahead. Read it. Um, um, well, I'll kind of translate as I'm reading in okay, he, uh, Hebrew because your viewers don't understand That's fine. Uh, Hebrew. Uh, behold, a nation shall a nation. Uh, it, it's, it's difficult to translate okay. right away. Well, look, uh, is that verse 5 or 4? Do not know. No, hold on. You're reading 4 then. Then it must be 5 in your translation. Read 5. Your your makers are your husbands. Second. Let me uh, let, let me get it out in my in my English so that it's yeah. not difficult. Isaiah, where are you? Fifty. Yes, Candidson. Yeah, he's trying to say Luis because he thinks he's young. Remember, he's young. They think they know. Sorry, God's working on him. There's still hope for him. Keep praying. Now, go ahead. Isaiah fifty four five. Uh, 54. I'm, I'm gonna use the. I'm, what are, doesn't grab, matter. Just read it. English Just Bible read. as well. 54. Yeah, yeah, five. Yeah. Fear not. Are you for thy maker? Yes. Fear not for thy maker. Which one is it? Yeah, that's the one. For thy maker is what? Oh, oh, oh. for thy maker is thine husband, Yahuwah of hosts. Okay. Is his name? Give me the Hebrew word for maker. Okay. okay. And uh, and and. Give me oh, the word we're in 54. I see. I was on the wrong chapter. Whatever it is. Give me the word for maker. Okay. Osai. Okay. Osai. Tell us if you really Osai. know. Osai. No, the ik is this. That's the possessive suffix. Osai. Yeah, yeah. Osai. Singular or plural? Plural. I mean, singular. No, it's not. I know you're going to say plural. No, no. So you just yeah, lied. It, it is. And actually, okay. there is no... No, 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 no. Don't start lying in front of my face because here it is. It's a plural. Stop lying. If you're lying, I'm going to shame you, embarrass you. Osai is the plural of Asa. Don't lie to me. It is actually not. Yes, the it plural is. form of Asa is Aso. No, it's Osai. Right here, yes, guys. It is Aso. Okay. Right here. It is Aso. Okay. And the plural Friend, form for your Stop talking be over me. Tired. Stop talking over me like a coward. I know you're afraid. Here's the link, folks. See, when he gets caught, what does he do? He has to run. Here it is. This is it. I'm going to now give it to you too, to call you out that you're an ignorant butchering the scriptures, which I don't blame you for. No, Go just, there. Click on that. Click on that. Bro. Listen and click on it. Guys, I uh, want you to go there. Now, guys, can you go see that there? You'll see the word Osayip. And then if you look at the bottom of the word right there, so you don't take my word for it, it is masculine plural participle you see the mpc masculine so this guy just lied in front of my face and thought he got away with it because his father is the father of lies it's a masculine plural participle you liar S apologize no, to my audience for lying. this is an incorrect this is an incorrect now what is the word what is the word, word husband it is what is the word husband any hebrew grammar book yes and i just gave you the hebrew. what yeah. is the word for husband because I'm going to bust you out on lying. Don't worry. This is just the beginning of me busting you out for your lies. What's the word yeah, for husband? Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. What's the uh, word for husband? Boalaich. Okay. Now, I want you to lie to people again and say Boalaich is not plural. Of Baal. Lie to them. Boalaich is not plural. Baalotecha. Now, you see now. You see what you're gonna, now, we caught this guy in a lie. The plural so, ending is ot or in. No. Not a, no. No. Even no, no, because the word you can uh, have a word. I no. is okay. plural. It's just in no, grammar. it's not. No, go to Ecclesiastes book, 12, seriously. verse 1. Go to Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1. So now you guys know who's his father, the devil. He's a liar. You saw it's a masculine plural participle, but that's okay. He can think he's gonna lie. Now, I want you to lie through your teeth here and tell me this is singular too. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1. Okay, hold on. Let's see. Let me get there. Um. It's, it's okay to go slow, right? Like, we don't need to... As long as you don't like, lie, run over do not other. lie. We can take it as long as you want, but stop lying to me. Okay. Be honest. Because you're going to embarrass yourself. Hey, because we I'm have not people lying. Like, I'm honestly only speaking from my Hebrew understanding okay. since I've been studying So then be humble eight. and say...
be humble and say, I'm studying it. I don't know it that well. And according well, to my I knowledge, know it pretty well. No, you don't. So, Are we, not only am I giving you the Hebrew, I we do. have someone here who reads Hebrew. Here, Abdul Halaj, you're in the text, so that people think maybe I'm lying about the Hebrew. Abdul Halaj, can you confirm that these words are plural, masculine plural participles? He can read it as his mother tongue. Here, we got someone here. So Abdul Halaj is an Arabic name. Does and your and your name is a Japanese Arabic name. In? Now notice your stupidity. Your name is Yoshi. What, Yoshiahu. Also, Yoshiahu. what was your it's English name when you were born? What was the name given to you when you were born? Well, I was born in America, so I have What the name was Josiah your American Ray name? Yoshiahu. What was your American name? My Amer Josiah. Now notice this moron just said because he's got an Arabic name that somehow disqualifies him from knowing Hebrew, where he was given the name Josiah, which is an English name. You see again? I didn't say it. I didn't just say it disqualifies okay. him. What does an Arabic name got to do with the man reading Hebrew? Um, I noticed it was an Arabic name. What does so that got to do a, with the man knowing Hebrew? I mean, you sound just, you sound dumber than tongue. David Wood. You said, you said mother tongue? Yeah. And so if it was his mother tongue, then he would have Wait, to be Wait, so you mean there Arabic aren't Jews who are born Israel? in Arabic, Arabic lands that are given Arabic names? You see how stupid that sounds? Anyway, if, if, go to Ecclesiastes 12.1 stop, and stop wasting my time. Go to Ecclesiastes 12.1 and stop wasting my time. Go to Ecclesiastes 12.1. Kid. Remember how thy creator. Give me the, the Hebrew word for creator. All right. Hold on. You even make David look, look David Wood look smart. So that's scary. Anyway, please ask these 12 verse 1. Guys, a couple more minutes and then we'll. And we'll get to the session. I'm almost there. Sorry about that. Sorry, that's okay. Uh, chapter seven, eight, nine, and twelve, verse one. Say it again. Was that Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1? Sorry about that. I couldn't hear you. Are you sure you're there? Read it. 12, 1. Uh, okay. um, so the word, so what is it? The word, bore, 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 what is it? Bore, 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 please don't lie in front of us. What is it? I just said, Borefa. No, what is it? You know what I'm asking. I'm not saying the pronunciation. Plural or singular? Oh, oh. Um, the word create is actually only used in the case of God, and so it's not used very often. It's what? actually kind of hard to tell here. Because no, it's not hard to time. Create. No, it's not. You don't want to admit it. It's, again, masculine plural participles. You see again? You see you're lying in front of me? It's plural. Remember your creators. Why are you lying, young man? I'm not lying. Okay. okay. Can you now honestly admit to them it is plural? I can't do that. Okay. Up, up for the sake of charity, I'll say you don't know hey, the language. Let's, let, let's, let's go to, no, let's wait, go wait, to wait. other screen because wait. your understanding of plural and singular is a little not so. No, I'm going um, I'm to prove. It, it is, uh, sir, I'm going to prove my point why the plural is there. Just be patient. Now go to Genesis 35, verse 17. Well, I, I know why you're saying the plural is okay, there. That's Genesis good. That's 35. Good. 30, 35, verse 7. Genesis 35, 35, 7. Guys, I want you guys to see. The links I'm giving you literally says, remember your creators using plural participles okay. for God. I'm talking to them, not you. Just calm down. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go to Genesis you 35, verse 7. Bible hub because the Hebrew is there. The, creator. the Hebrew is What's there. That? Oh, you want the link? Okay. Yeah, it gives you the Hebrew I'm, I, I'm saying I'm saying you're giving Bible Hub, so Bible Hub's not actually teaching the uh, okay. Hebrew. Do you want me to quote a rabbi? Wait, wait, wait! I'm gonna bust you, bust you out here. Do you want me to quote a rabbi who admits these are plurals and tries to explain them, but he admits they're plurals? Because they can see if I quote Bible Hub with the Hebrew, that's not good enough. Do you want me to quote a Jewish okay. source who's not a Christian and says, "Yeah, they're plurals," but tries to explain them away? Um, it actually is irrelevant because Jews okay. will go all over the place with Hebrew to prove their you own guys, point. Guys, did you, you hear that? Work, Wait, I want to them to hear grammar. this.
Do you guys hear that? Even Jews who don't believe in Jesus, even their admission, these are plurals, it's irrelevant. Because the all right, go to Genesis 35 or 7. Go to Genesis yeah. 35 or 7. Yeah, he's a young man, guys. I don't think I'm gonna take much more time with him. He's young. Just a couple more. He's afraid because I know Hebrew. See now, because you talk like a punk, I'm gonna now try to I'm gonna cheat you like a punk. You're the one embarrassing yourself in front of everyone. Genesis 35 or 7. Keep have, having a punk. You should have got a Hebrew grammar book. Okay. I'm out there. So okay. what pick do you want up, to, pick up the Hebrew grammar. Pick up your Hebrew grammar book. Let me not embarrass you. Pick up your Hebrew grammar book. Go for the entry where these words are shown and give us the page number and show it on the screen that says it's not plural. Let me now embarrass you. Well, huh? actually, I was I was actually studying when I was no. uh, eight okay, years old. Okay, now read Genesis 35 or seven. I don't have my grammar book with me. Yeah, gee, how can I you? I don't need it. But yet you're, I don't, you're, I don't, I don't you're need easy. it. I already read it. Genesis so, like, 35 or 7. Genesis you, yeah? 35 or 7, young man. I'm going to spank you like I was your father. Go to Genesis 35 or 7. Uh, yeah, so he built there an altar, and he called the place El Beit El, the what? house of God. For what? there was revealed unto him... God, the okay. bar Read for me the word reveal. Ran away from the face of his brother. Read for me the word he reveal. What is it in Hebrew? Niklu. Okay. Now, please lie to us again and say Niklu is not plural. It is in the plural. Okay. Now, wait, wait. Guys, did you hear it? It's in the plural. Why is it plural? Elohim is in the plural also. Elohim is in the okay. plural also. So, but let me now catch you and embarrass you. Is it not true Elohim is used with singular pronouns and participles? So now why change it here? Single pronouns? But, um, here, uh, let me, unless he's talking about why himself. Why Elohim yeah. is accompanied by singular verbs, participles, and nouns and pronouns? All of a sudden now here, it's plural. So then why in most occurrences, Elohim, that's plural, is accompanied with the singular. See, now this again shows you don't know what you're talking about. Every time. Actually, this isn't a pronoun. Can I finish it? This isn't a pronoun. I didn't say pronoun. Listen to me. Don't twist my words. I said when Elohim is used, it's typically mm -hmm. accompanied with singular nouns, pronouns, verbs, participles, adjectives. So I didn't just say pronouns. I know it's not a pronoun here. So your excuse, Elohim is a plural. That's why it's a plural. You got busted again because. In every occurrence, okay, let's, let's in every occurrence, let me make my point. In every occurrence, okay. Elohim, the plural, is accompanied with singular, except here. Why? That's actually not true because even Why? in the uh, no, e even in Genesis one, it, it's actually we. No, it's and not so, Genesis one. I'm not afraid. That, yeah, okay. it is. Let okay. us make man in our image. It is. That's not proving your point. That's proving my point. Is. No, that, that, okay. that's actually a totally different right. subject, which I do have an explanation to. Anyway, man, do have an take care, buddy. I have do a have an answer to this. Okay, guys. When you said it was a waste of time, we're done. Was that okay now? I didn't know he was this young. And this young and stupid. Right. Sorry, guys. I didn't know he was this young. Sorry to waste your time. All right. Now, what did you learn? This goes back to the point I was making earlier, right? Yeah, honestly, I didn't know he was this young. So don't say, look, man, you're a bully. You're, you're picking on kids. That's what David Wood does. Okay. Now, what does this tell you again? What does this tell you? This tells you that even with the original languages, you can still butcher them to your shame and destruction and humiliation. Right? Did you see it now? Did you see now a live case study? Someone who thinks he knows the languages and butchers it to shame and destruction and humiliation. Okay, so this now adds a caveat. Rather, study the biblical languages and learn the biblical languages than learn Arabic. But at the same time, knowing the languages isn't a magic formula that guarantees you interpret the scriptures correctly. This confirms what I said about Arabic yeah, Muslim will tell you, you don't know Arabic. But how many Muslims who know Arabic can't agree what the Arabic Quran means? You get it there? Now, is that okay, that, that short break? You guys all right? Did you enjoy it?
What both sides? Lopez. He's admitting a plural doesn't mean plural, it's singular, right? And though in Genesis 3, 5, 7, Niglu is plural, oh, because it's Elohim, and Elohim's plural, but other places where Elohim's used, it's a company with singular verbs, pronouns, nouns, adjectives, participles. Why the change here? Anyway, be that as it may, and Ecclesiastes 12, 1, there it says, remember thy creators. Oh, it's, I don't know if it is. So when he can't get out of it, I don't know if it is. But in other places, yes, I know Hebrew. I'm a, come on, he's a young kid. He's one of those young punks that think that they know. But keep praying for him. He's a young punk, an arrogant punk, use of the devil, but he can be a child of God in time. In time. Sorry for wasting your time, honestly. I didn't know he was this young. Young and stupid. Yeah. No, but that's why I controlled it. I said, come to Genesis 35, 7. But for the rest of you, you okay now? Did you at least enjoy it a little bit? Even though he was a young punk. And I said, I'm going to now, I'm going to now uh, spank you like your father. Okay, good. And here, Abdul Halaj is here. He knows I'm not making up. Abdul Halaj, Abdul Halaj, my brother, you're here. Do you read Hebrew and do you speak Hebrew, Abdul Halaj? So I don't want you to think I was making stuff up. And I know you don't think I was making stuff up, but here. Do you read Hebrew? Okay. Is it not true, Isaiah 54, 5, those were plural participles, makers and husbands? Right? Isaiah 54, 5, right here. See, you know it. Guys, you know why that's amazing stuff for you guys? I have an article, if you want the article, where I show you plural participles are used for the one God, Jehovah, in the Hebrew Bible. Proving that the writers knew God was plurality and unity. They called God creators. They called God <clears throat> husbands. They called God makers. They use plural for the one God, which troubles and baffles Jews who don't believe in the Trinity or Unitarians who don't believe in the Trinity. Why would these plurals be used of the one God? Why is he called creators, makers? Why is he called husbands? Yeah, there's a handful of them. It's not as many, but plenty enough to show you something is going on here, folks. Because for the most part, the, the names of God are accompanied by the singular. Singular verbs, adjectives, participles, nouns, pronouns. But there are those handful of places where plurals are used. Why? Creators? Makers? Husbands? God, they caused me to wander? God, they appeared to me? Wow. You guys want that article? You guys want me to give you that article? Hold on. You want to get it for you? Okay, let me get it for you then. Here you go. Will you promise to read it and use it? You saw? I use it here, right? And they can only tap dance. All right, hold on. get it for you let me get it for you here you go here you go here's the article that's one save that link that's one okay What a waste of time. I, why do these guys think they can comment? Because they're trying to make a name for themselves, unfortunately, right? And they, they end up embarrassing themselves. Here you go. Let me find you. Let me find you another one. Here's an article quoting rabbinic Jewish sources admitting Elohim is plural. And echad is, is the word you use for plurality. Here's one. Okay. So those two articles, let me get you a few more, and then we begin. Here's another one. This one you got to save too. Three articles I've given you thus far. Here's the third one. Click on them, save them, study them. You'll be blown away a handful of times in the Hebrew Bible, plural verbs, participles, adjectives, pronouns are used of God. 
Places in the Hebrew Bible where God is said to be creators, makers, husbands. God, they caused me to wander. God, they revealed themselves to me. God's holy ones is he. Did you know there's a verse in the Bible where God is said to be God's holy ones is he. It uses the singular pronoun who, but it uses two plural nouns. Elohim, Kadoshim. Did you know that? Elohim, plural for God. Kadoshim, plural for holy one. Kadoshim is plural of Kadosh. Kadoshim means holy one. So he's called God's holy ones is he. Do you want me to give you that verse? You want that verse? And it's in the article, guys. If you save the link to the articles, it's there. But you want to see that verse for yourselves? Oh, you of little faith? Here, let me show it to you. I hope this guy at least got you excited and attentive enough, right? To get ready for the rest of this. Hold on, man. Here you go. Why didn't it come out? Here you go. This is from my article, one of them. Here you go. And I'm going to give you the link so you can look at the interlinear. Here you go. Oops, sorry. But Joshua said to the people, you are not able to serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. Elohim, Kadoshim, who? Elohim, Kadoshim, who? Literally, for he is holy ones, gods. God's the holy ones. That's what it literally says. Do you know that? It literally says that because Kadeshim is plural. I don't know why Esther keeps posting in a foreign language. The word translated as holy is the plural adjective Kadoshim, holy ones. The passage can therefore, therefore be rendered as God's, the holy ones, is he. That's from my article. Okay. Now let me give you the interlinear so you can see it for yourself. Guys, you do not know. How much evidence the true God, the triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit has given us to show and prove beyond any reasonable doubt with irrefutable proofs, God is triune, Jesus is the God, man, the Bible is his word. You just don't know. It is an ocean of information. Here's the link. Guys, click on that link and go and see if the words are plural, okay? Here, you're going to see it says <clears throat> Elohim, noun, masculine, plural. Kadoshim, adjective, masculine, plural. Who is a pronoun, masculine, singular. It's right there at the bottom. Elohim, Kadoshim, who? Are you guys blown away by this, folks? We were 160. We're jumping. Come on. In Jesus' name, gonna get, we're going to get more people. And by the way, the people on Discord... Daughter Christ and all there. Are you guys being blessed by this too? If you guys are blessed, are you ready for me to continue on Sunni Islam? Or you're tired and saying, man, let's take a break. Let's take a break. Sam, I can't handle this. You know, I'm bored. Who's ready now to rock and roll? Yeah, baby. It's coming. It's coming, baby. It's coming. The, the definition is coming. All right. Now let's get back to the subject of Sunni Islam. And I promise you I'm going to make it exciting. I'm going to teach you Bible as we are through Islam. I promise you by the power of the Holy Spirit. And folks, I think from all these sessions that you have listened to, I think I have demonstrated. And let me know if you agree. Because I'm here to serve you for the sake of Jesus as long as Jesus wants me to serve you. He doesn't need me. He can tell me stop. But I think I've demonstrated from my debates, impromptu ones, and scheduled ones, and these sessions... I think I have demonstrated that I'm giving you solid exegesis and irrefutable facts by the power of the Holy Spirit. Would you agree? Honestly, does anyone agree? And I'll be honest with me. Let me get my phone and my drink. Be honest with me. You know. All right. Let me get my drink. Sorry. I think I've demonstrated that. 
Would you guys agree? If you agree, then here's what I want you to do to bless me. Study the materials. Re-listen re to the sessions. Upload them to your YouTube ch channels. Make clips of them. Upload my articles, rebuttals to your websites. Disseminate this information to glorify Jesus Christ. If you are confident, confident that the arguments I'm presenting and the interpretation I'm presenting are solid, then use them for the glory of Jesus. That's what I ask. That's my heart's desire. I want you to have absolute trust in the Bible, knowing without any doubt it is God's word, the God of the Bible. He's real. No doubt he's alive. Jesus is alive, and he loves us and will preserve us, and we will see him, and death is not the end of us. If you believe that, please use the information. Study them. Teach them to others. I want you to multiply this for the glory of Christ. That's how you bless me. Teach this to others so more people can fall in love with Jesus because we can't love him enough. We don't do enough for him. And the whole creation needs to acknowledge him and love him and praise him. Okay? With that said, let's begin. And for the sake of Christ, put up with my imperfections, my toughness. Put up with it and ask the Lord to change me and forgive me if I offend you because you will learn. No, I'm not. Kevin, let me explain. You know, let me explain for Kevin. Real quick, let me explain for Kevin. Kevin, last night, because I've done sessions on this, I said, go listen to my three-part session on the Father being seen. You said something. You said you still can't understand John 1.18 when it says the Father can't be seen. Let me know where you're confused so I can help you by the grace of God, and we go into the subject. Thank you, Ender. I love you. You used to be offended by me. I'm still offended by you, Ender. Your face offends me. Okay, so Kevin, what part of John 118 was hard for you to understand? Because I thought I made it clear, but that's okay. Kevin, let me know. Okay, you understand John 118, Kevin, is not saying you cannot see God the Father. Let me just make it clear and let me know you got it because I want you to get it. It's not saying you can't see God the Father. It's saying without Jesus, you can't see God the Father. Without Jesus, you can't see God the Father. But because of Jesus, you can see God the Father. Yeah, that. see again? Kevin just said something. I was confused by one of the comments I saw. You see, guys, why I say don't pontificate, don't chime in, because you're going to confuse people, and then I have to stop and correct you. You see? He just proved my point. Thank you, brother. I was con confused by one of the comments I saw. Help me to help you. That's why I say don't pontificate. Because you're going to say something that's wrong, confuse someone, and then I have to correct it. So, Kevin, are you sure you got it, brother? I want to make sure you got it so we can move on now. And that you use it for the glory of Christ. And don't just say it to appease me. If you don't get it, I'll explain it for you. Is it? I didn't know Jerry Maguire said that. I honestly didn't. All right. Let's go to Sunni Islam. Are we ready? By the grace of Jesus Christ, expose Sunni Islam. Are we ready? Invite more people. I want to see 250 people next week on my live streams. Okay, in Jesus' name. Sunni Islam, I already explained why Sunni Islam. Rewind and listen from the beginning because I'm not going to go over it. Now, we're going to make a distinction between Iman. You guys, remember these terms. Iman and Islam. Iman and Islam and Aqidah. I have a hard time pronouncing that. All right, Akida, Akida, Akida. Okay, remember these three terms Iman, Islam, Akida, Akida, Akida. Man, that word. I have a hard time because the K. Okay, anyway. Iman means faith or even trust, Islam means submission, Akida means creed. You got to listen to me now. Here's where you're going to learn Iman, these are Arabic terms. And Akida actually is a loan word from Hebrew. In fact, Abdul Halij, yep, Abdul Halij will confirm. What do they call the binding of Isaac in Hebrew? Don't they call it the Akida of Isaac? The Akida of Ishaq? The, uh, the Akida of Ishaq? Abdul Halij? 
Just want to make sure. Thank, he's, a, he's a blessing to me, this brother. He knows the languages and he can confirm when I say something about the languages, I'm not lying. If he's here, I think he took uh, maybe a pilgrimage to the to the to the wall in Jerusalem. What happened to you, Abdullah? Did you left? Okay. Anyway, the binding of Isaac in Hebrew is called the Aqidah of Shaq, the binding of Isaac, right? Aqidah means to bind. This word also means creed. What binds you to something? The reason why, both in Hebrew and in Arabic, this word aqidah would be used in reference to your belief system because your religion binds you to certain beliefs. Are you making the connection? Aqidah means to bind, but also refers to creed, what you believe. Why this word? Because if you believe a religion, you're bound to believe what that religion teaches. So are you seeing the overlap? Aqidah means to bind, to bind something, to bind something up, and it means creed, belief. You are bound to believe the tenets of this religion. You're getting it? So aqidah means creed. The Latin term is credo. The Latin term is credo. Credo means I believe. Credo in Latin means I believe. So we're going to talk about the beliefs of Islam, and then God willing, maybe I'll do the pillars of Islam. Now, what's the difference between Iman, faith or trust, and Islam, submission? Well, the Quran distinguishes between faith and Islam. Now, who's going to be posting Quranic verses? Is it first and last or Protestant? Which one of you? I forgot to ask. Which one of you is going to do it? Are, the, are they even here? I guess they're not here. First last, where are you at, bro? You left? I think you left. Okay, if you left, that's fine. I'm going to have to do it. Sorry. He was here, but he's gone. Okay. Yo, hey, first last, can you post Quranic verses? See, someone already posted it in Discord. They knew where I was going with this. Chapter 49, oh, you're driving, you little sinner. Okay, chapter 49, verses 14 and 15. Let me get it. Of all the days you can drive, you drive me crazy today. You have to drive, man? Okay, I'm going to be reading it here. Chapter 49, verses 14 and 15. The Quran distinguishes between Iman, faith, and Islam. Okay, 49, 14 and 15. The Bedouins say, this is chapter 49, verses 14 and 15, and we're going to tie it to the Bible. We're going to tie it to the Bible. Let me know when you're parked. Okay. The Bedouins, the Arab Bedouins say, we believe. Yeah. We are believers. A mu'min, a believer. Say, you don't believe. Rather say, we submit. Aslamna. Aslamna, sorry. Aslamna meaning aslam. Notice, you don't believe. But you have submitted. And that word Aslam comes from the same root where we get Islam. And you Arabic speakers, correct me. I'm accountable to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, right? Correct me. Okay. Aslam comes from the same root where we get Islam. Islam means submission, surrender. So here it says, no, you don't have Iman, at least true Iman, but you have submitted. So are you seeing? The Quran distinguishes. The Quran distinguishes between Iman, faith and trust, and Islam, submission. And Abdul Haraj, I was asking you the question. Isn't it true the binding of Isaac is called the Aqidah? Aqidah is Ishaq? She wanted you to confirm this. You know, I'm aware of it, but it's always good to have two or three witnesses. See? So thank the Lord Jesus for my brothers and sisters to provide an additional witness, because the Bible says two or three wit witnesses will confirm something. So I don't want you to take my word for it. Now, let me finish the passages, and we're going to go into it. And we're going to have fun. We're going to have fun. All right. We do. You, you do not believe. Rather, say we surrender. For belief has not entered your hearts. You don't have iman in your hearts. If you obey Allah and his messenger, he will not diminish you anything of your works. Allah is all forgiving, all compassionate. The believers, then who are the believers? The ones who have iman. Are those who believe in Allah and his messenger, then have not doubted and have struggled, 
done jihad with their possessions and their souls in the way of Allah. Fi sabil Allah. Those they are the truthful ones. Okay, guys, understand what the Quran just said. Understand what the Quran just said. You can be a Muslim and not a believer. You can profess submission to Allah and His Messenger, but not truly have faith in your heart. You know why? True faith in your heart means you don't simply surrender externally. In your heart, you have to resolve it and have no doubt Muhammad is the messenger and be willing to do everything Muhammad tells you, even fight and kill in the way of Allah. Fi sabil Allah. In other words, if you say you're Muslim and you're called to go and fight the kufar and you don't do it, then you don't have faith. You've simply surrendered externally, but in your heart you have no faith. Okay? Everyone with me so far? So notice he's a group of Arabs. It says, no, you've submitted, but you don't have faith in your hearts until you completely wholeheartedly devote yourself to whatever Allah and his messenger tell you, such as giving up your wealth and then struggling, doing jihad in the cause of Allah. You got it there? Now let me give you another verse. Protestant, will you be able to post? Chapter 4, verse 65. Chapter 4, verse 65. And then we're going to go into the Articles of the Faith. Okay, 465. Andrew, I'm going to be doing multi-part series at your request, by the grace of Jesus Christ. Exactly, Sai Christian, we know. 465, guys. Thank the mods for helping me to help you. But nay, by thy Lord. No, by thy Lord. Notice here. They will not believe in truth until they make thee judge of what is in dispute between them and find within themselves and their souls. Notice, it can't be just external. Internally, you better have no doubt. Internally, you better have no doubt whatsoever. Okay? okay. They will not believe in truth until they make thee judge of what is in dispute between them and find within themselves no dislike of that which thou decidest and submit with full submission. Did you catch it, what you just read? It says, no, they will not truly believe until they make you, Muhammad, a judge over every affair and submit to you internally, meaning within themselves, having no doubt and resolving it within themselves to believe and surrender to everything you say, Muhammad. And submit you to completely. In other words, folks, true Islam is not submitting to Allah. True Islam is submitting to Allah's puppet or human manifestation, Muhammad. That's true Islam. And you know what the commentators say, occasion, this verse? And I have it in my articles. You know why this verse was revealed? You can read it in Ibn Kathir. You can read it in Ibn Kathir. There were two men who had a dispute, and Muhammad decided in favor of one man. The man who didn't like that decision went to Abu Bakr. He goes, this is what was decided, you know, but I don't think that Muhammad's decision was fair. Abu Bakr said, man, if he decided it, case closed. So then they went to Amr, Amr ibn al-Khattab, Amr ibn al-Khattab. And then they said, look, you know, um, I'm, I'm not comfortable with this decision in favor of this guy. You know, uh, and Omar said, wait, so the messenger told you this is his verdict? Yes. And you even went to Abu Bakr and he said, you agree and submit to the messenger's decision? Yes. And you still question it? This is Ibn Kathir, folks. He goes, yes, I don't think it's fair. I don't think what the prophet, the messenger decided was fair. Omar said, hold on. Omar went into the house and said he took a sword and he cut the man's head off. He chopped the man's head off. And the verse came down justifying what Umar did. He killed a companion of Muhammad with Allah's approval. Simply for not accepting Muhammad's judgment and decision. You guys know that or no? I'm not lying. Well, Ender, he's thinking, well, it's not 
a life and death decision. And it doesn't have to do with worship. It just had to do with something insignificant that the man felt maybe the prophet didn't judge wisely. The prophet of Satan. He's not a true prophet. And oh, Omar said, oh, really? Okay. And cut off his neck. You understand what that means? That means a true Muslim must resolve it within him, himself or herself. Muhammad is the perfect human being. All his decisions are perfect because he's the human spokesperson of Allah. I have no doubt in anything he says, and I will fully submit to everything he says in every aspect of my life, even the way I go to the bathroom. And real quickly, let me explain what I mean. If you're a Sunni Muslim, you can't go to the bathroom and do what you want. You can't even clean, clean yourself the way you want. You got to do it the way Muhammad said. If not, you're not a true believer. You're not a true believer. For example, Muhammad said, when you go to the bathroom, relieve yourself, use your left hand. Don't use your right. And use an odd number of toilet paper. At that time, there wasn't toilet paper. So I can't use two sheets of toilet paper. I have to use one, three, five. That has to be an odd number. You believe that? And that's what 465 said. You may say you're a Muslim and externally submit, but you're not a Muslim with true faith in your heart, Iman, unless you resolve it. He is the messenger. And in my heart, I have no doubt. And I love him more than anything. And anything he says, I'll do it. You want me there? But it gets even better. You know when you eat your food? This is in the Sunnah. And I'll give you links to this. Okay? Ask me before I end the session to give you links to all of this. I have articles on this. Okay. Do you know when you eat your food? Muhammad said, either lick your fingers or have your neighbor lick them. In other words, if I'm sitting here with thou shalt not pontificate, and I just ate greasy chicken. Brother, lick my fingers because there is barakah. You don't lick, that means you don't have iman, true faith in your heart. Ya kafir munafiq. Shan nifak. Lick. Licky, licky good. Finger looking good, baby. <laughs> yep. Where do you think David Wood got the Islamicized series from? Go listen to the Islamicized series. Everything David did in those series were based on the teachings of Muhammad. We we're not making it up. Boy, I can't wait to find a Muslim and I'll say, Yahi, I'm my name is Abdul Rahman. Yahi, I just ate greasy Kentucky fried chicken, halal. Lick my fingers for the blessing. Finger licking good. I'm recording this. You don't lick, I put on YouTube. Ya munafik, lick. Stick it in your mouth. Yummy, yummy. Stock for Allah, ya munafiq. Shan nifaq. All right. Okay, so now we're going to talk about iman. We're going to talk about faith. We're going to talk about aqidah. The articles of faith of Islam. And we're going to have fun. Are you ready now for the articles of faith? We're going to have fun. Boy, are we going to have fun exposing Islam for the glory of Jesus Christ. Are we ready? And I'm going to do multi-part series. That's what it is. Ya ukhti. Ukhti. If I'm a muharram, meaning that you can be in my presence, hafsa, then you better be careful if I'm a muharram where I can be in your presence. I'm going to take you to KFC, ya hafsa. I'm going to make you lick my fingers and you're going to love it because it's going to taste like jannah. Mm -hmm. But ah, hold on. By the way, if you guys don't know what a muharram, muharram is, muharram means some a man that can be in the presence of a Muslim woman. A man that can be in the presence of a Muslim woman. Okay? Now, hapsa, and it has to be a family relative, a brother, a father, a uncle, a cousin. Now, I'm not related to hapsa. That means she cannot be in my presence alone, and she can't unveil herself. And hapsa knows this, daughter of Christ knows this, they came out of this. But there is a solution, Hafsa, Ukhti. You can make me haram, meaning forbidden for me to touch you so I can be in your presence. Here's how she can do it, folks, according to Muhammad Sunnah. She can breastfeed me 10 times. Ya Ukhti. 
I want you to be able to be in my presence. So Prophet Nabi Kareem, Nabi Kareem said, a woman can breastfeed a man 10 times and then he can be in her presence. Ukhti, come breastfeed me. Yeah, baby. Now you see how stupid, how evil, disgusting, immoral this religion is? Muhammad told the women of his, time, of the, of his day, breastfeed this man 10 times, then he becomes your foster son through breastfeeding, and so he can be in your presence and you don't have to be afraid of anything immoral. So let me get this right, Muhammad. A man who is whose hormones are kicking in goes to a woman, sees her naked breast, suckles on that, and that's supposed to cure any sexual desire between them? Man, brilliant. Wow. Who would have thunk it? Seeing a, a naked breast, suckling it, would actually remove any sexual desire in my heart for a woman. Man, this Muhammad was brilliant. <laughs> All right. Are we ready now? Let's talk about the Articles of Faith. Louisa, as you're learning about Islam, are you seeing how disgusting it is? Because we have a newbie here. Yeah, he was a whack job, King of Kings. <laughs> Protestant believer. I'm not going to even repeat that. Okay. The things Muslims are to believe, and we're going to unpack them. A Muslim has to believe the following. There's only one God, Allah. Guys, pay attention. There's only one God, Allah. So if you want... Put them as points, numbered points. Point number one, there is no God but Allah. Okay? Number two, they must believe in the existence of a spirit realm. Follow with me, guys. You guys are going to be blessed and you're going to be challenged because I'm going to tie it in with the Bible and blow you away. They believe in the existence of a spirit realm. If you're a Muslim, you have to believe in a spirit realm, and I'll get back to that in a minute. Number three, they must believe... They believe in the existence of prophets and messengers, prophets and apostles. And prophets and apostles are not necessarily the same. That's the third, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Number four, and I was just looking to see uh, my phone. Number four, they must believe in revealed books. Revealed books. Books sent down through messengers to guide communities. And legislate their life. That's the fourth article. Fifth article of faith that they must believe. Fifth article of faith. The last day. Including the resurrection and the rewards and the punishment of the afterlife. I'm going to unpack these. And as I unpack them, you're going to be blown away, disgusted. How evil, satanic the religion is. And how beautiful Jesus is. How beautiful the Bible is. How beautiful our God happens to be in contrast to this. Okay? Let me briefly talk about the second article of faith, the spirit realm, the second article of faith. Muslims are mandated, Sunni Muslims are mandated to believe in the existence of angels. And the Quran does mention at least two angels by name. Let's go to chapter 2, verse 98 of the Quran. Chapter 2, verse 98 of the Quran. And if you have questions, stop me. Say, I have a question. Chapter 2, verse 98. The Protestant, our brother, can do it. God bless this man. He's really, he works tirelessly to help me for the glory of Christ. 298. If you don't have it, I'll go there. Hold on. Okay. 298. Okay, got it. Whoever was an enemy to Allah and his angels and his messengers and Gabriel and Mikhail, Michael. So two angels are mentioned by name in the Quran. Gabriel, Jibreel, and Michael, Mikhail. Do you see it? So surely Allah is an enemy to the infidels. So it mentions two angels by name, Gabriel and Michael, Jibreel, alayhi salam, and Mikhail, alayhi salam. Chapter 66, verse 4 of the Quran. Chapter 66, verse 4 of the Quran. Chapter 66, verse 4 of the Quran. You guys, we're going to have fun. This is just beginning. 
pay a salah. Okay, let me get there. I know it's, if it's if it's taking too long, brother, you can just stick with the Bible. I'll do this. As long as you let me know if I'm buffering by texting me on my phone. Okay. If you two repent to Allah, yet your hearts certainly incline, but if you support one another against Allah, his protector, and Jibreel, Gabriel, and is righteous among the believers, and after that the angels are his supporters. So do you see Gabriel and Michael are two of the angels mentioned, even though there are many. So if you're a true Muslim, you must believe in the angelic realm. And they'll tell you that the angel of revelation, the angel that came to Muhammad was Gabriel, Jibreel. And Michael is mentioned. But there's another class of beings, class of creatures that the Quran mentions, that the Bible does not mention. The jinn. The jinn. J-I-N-N. -N. Also, jan. J-A-N-N. Now, for some of you who are hearing this for the first time, you may be thinking, like Luisa, what in the world is a jinn? Every Westerner knows what a jinn is, even those who haven't studied Islam. Every Westerner knows what a jinn is, even those who haven't studied Islam. A jinn is a genie. Yep, you got it. Jinn is a genie. So is it ironic that those of you who grew up on I Dream of Genie, Barbara Eden, that show, you remember? I used to watch it. Now it makes sense why she was dressed in Arabic clothing, right? Because genies are part of the Arabic folklore. Genies come out of Arabic folklore and fairy tales that Muhammad adopted as part of his religion. A genie is a jinn. That's why Aladdin looks Arabic. Have you ever wondered why the genies and Aladdin all look Arabic? Because genies come from Arabic folklore and fairy tales, which Muhammad accepted as a reality. Are you with me there? Okay. Now, what does Islamic theology teach, meaning Sunni Islam? This is true. I'm not lying. Sunni Islam teaches every person has, a, has angels assigned to them and has a jinn, a karin, karin assigned to them. Okay, now let me explain this. You guys got to get this. Okay. Right now, as I'm speaking, I have angels assigned to me, to my right and my left. Some will say one angel to my right, one angel to my left. Others will tell you it's more. But anyway, the angel on my right records all the good I do. The angel on my left records all the bad I do. And I have a genie attached to me. Now, according to Islamic theology, genies have free will. And they can choose to be good genies or bad genies. And genies choose religions. They either choose to be Christian or Muslim or Hindu. So even the genies can make religious choices. And genies can also have sex and get female genies pregnant, sire children through other genies, and that's how they procreate the race. That's how they spread the jinn race. Do you know that? Do you know that? So genies are like humans. Genies are like humans. In that, they can make religious choices, choose to be Muslim or follow another religion, and they can procreate and have sex and procreate their own species, species their genus, right? And that's why there are even Muslims who say, be careful, because genies can come around and sleep with humans. And sire children from humans. That's in Islamic theology. Do you know that? That's in Islamic theology. Did you guys know that or no? One second. Let me show you something. I got to get something. Hold on. One second, because these words are going to shock you guys. One second. Give me a second, guys, because I'm going to ask you a question. Well, I'm not going to ask it yet. Hold on. I want to show you something, because this is really going to trouble a lot of you guys. Sorry for the delays, but that's the nature of a live stream. Okay. Chapter. <clears throat> Sorry. Where am I at? Sorry. Oops. Sorry about that.
Hold on, guys. I don't know what happened here. Apologize for the delay because I want to show you something about the jinns that's going to really, if you're a Christian, it should trouble you. It really, well, even if you're not a Christian, it should trouble you anyway. Okay. Okay. I want you to look at this verse and let me bring out the implication of this verse. Okay. In Islamic paradise, awaiting Muslim men are huris, a brothel of whores, a brothel of whores, specially created whores that Muslim men will spend all their time deflowering, having sex with <clears throat> forever and ever. In other words, the paradise of Islam, the gen of Islam is a glorified whorehouse. It's a brothel. It's a play by mention of heaven. But here's what people don't know. Here's the Quran. I want you to read this, 55, verse 56. In them, in Jannah, there, in them will be maidens, chaste, restraining their glances, whom no man or jinn before them has touched. Did you know that Muhammad taught that not only will men deflower these women, but that there will be jinns who will also pass the test, because they were good Muslims, will enter Jannah and have six, sex with these whores. So the, the paradise of the Quran is a paradise where both genies and men will dwell, deflowering whores forever and ever with everlasting erections. Did you know that? Now, again, I know it's G-rated, but I'm going to trouble you. The Arabic at 55 to 56 doesn't say whom no man has touched. Here is Halali Khan translation. Halali Khan translation of 55, 56. Guys, read with me. Wherein both will be those maidens restraining their glances upon their husbands, whom no man or jinn, yet mithuhunna, yet mithuhunna. Literally, no man or jinn have opened their hymens with sexual intercourse. The Arabic is graphic. The Arabic says their hymens haven't been penetrated until their husbands come to do so, to open up their hymens. That's what the Arabic says. Here it is again from Hilali Khan. Understand how filthy, wicked, satanic this book is? You understand how disgusting this book is? It says, awaiting the men and the genies are whores whose hymens have not been penetrated except by them when they reach them. You get it now? Only a sick, sexually perverted mind could speak in such ways. Only a sick, demented, demonized, sexual pervert could talk like this in a book that's supposed to be from, from the God of all creation. Right? Thank you, Luisa. Now you're seeing it. Bill, no, they're not, brother. If they're mortals, they're not genie. B brother, even the name shows they're not mortals, meaning they're not human. If that's what you mean, mortals, they're not human. Is that what you mean? Because usually we associate mortality or mortals with humanity. Is that what you mean? No, they're not. That's why they're genies. They're separate from humans. But they're a lot like humans. Now, that said... If you're a Christian, well, everything dies according to Islam, Bill Shepherd, except Allah. Angels die and will be resurrected. Everything dies, so everything has mortality. Only Allah necessarily exists. That's a given. Islam is like Judaism, Christianity, in that only God is a necessarily existing being. Everything else has contingent immortality, meaning God created them and can wipe them out of existence, so they're... <clears throat> Life is not necessary. So Judea Judaism, Christianity, and Islam acknowledge only one immortal being by nature, only one necessarily existing being by nature who cannot die at all, God. Everything else is given life by God and can be taken out of existence. Okay? Well, Billy Mandalay, the past four subjects, we had 170, 100, God is bringing them in. The Spirit is drawing them for the glory of Jesus. May he be praised. Now, with that said, okay, 
Don't forget what Islam teaches and what a Muslim must believe, okay? Islam teaches a Muslim must believe. You have a jinn assigned to you. And if you're a Christian or, or a Jew or a Hindu, that means you have a jinn who is not a Muslim misleading you. You have a jinn, a genie attached to you to mislead you because if your genie was good, he would influence you to become Muslim. And there's an entire chapter of the Quran called the chapter of the genies. Did you know that? Surah Al-Jinn. Chapter 72 is the chapter of the genies and it recounts a conversation among the genies after seeing Muhammad and hearing him recite the Quran. You know what they say? Man, we heard a revelation that's amazing. And it shows us the error of our ways. Let me show you that. You guys want to laugh? Chapter 72 verses 1 to 3 of the Quran. Chapter 72, verses 1 to 3 in the Quran. Watch here. As he posted it, well, as he posted it, I'll, I'll quote it here. Right here. 72, verses 7, 1 to 3 of the Quran. Okay, watch here. Notice the name of the chapter, Al-Jinn. Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. All right, anyway. Say, O Muhammad, it has been revealed to me that a group of jinns listened to the Quran. So even the genies were listening to the Quran. And Allah told Muhammad, Hey Muhammad, I got some good news for you. You want to get excited, Muhammad? What is it, Allah? Even the genies were listening to your Quran. Yay! Really? What? You mean my Quran is so powerful that even the genies like to listen to it? Wow, Allah, you're so amazing. Yeah. Okay. It has been revealed to me that a group of jinns listen. They said, verily, we have heard a wonderful Quran, right? Which <clears throat> guiding to the guides to the right path. And we have believed therein. See, we believed in it. And we shall never join anything with our Lord. And exalted be the majesty of our Lord. He has taken neither a wife nor a son. Azwajal, subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're espousing Islamic theology. Did you catch it? Allah told Muhammad. The genies heard you recite the Quran and they became Muslim, Muhammad. They repented and they will never associate a wife to me or sons to me. You see your impact, Muhammad? Way to go, Muhammad. Good for you. You converted genies to Islam. You made genies Muslims, Muhammad. You saved them from hellfire. And because of you, the genies will join you in paradise to deflower and break open the hymens of the horse. What a wonderful messenger you are. What a blessing and mercy you are. You got it now? This is Islam, folks. This is the Islamic faith. Right? You understand something, though? These are the words of the jinn. And I don't know if people understand this. Maybe daughter of the Christ already knows this. Okay. You understand the words that I just read are not Allah's words. They're not Muhammad's words. Allah is quoting the words of the genie, genies. So I want to ask a question to the Muslims. How were the genies able to speak the language of the Quran so that their words are not part of the Quran? I thought no one can imitate the Quran, but these genies surely did because it's not the words of Allah. It's the words of the genies that Allah is repeating as part of the Quran. So you mean the genies can speak the language of the Quran and imitate the Quran? Wow! Brother, make a good point. Brother, make a good point. So wait, Allah, I thought no one can imitate the Quran. No one can. But hold on. Those are the words of the genies, right? And unless you're misquoting them, are you quoting them accurately? Word for word. Why is it that when you quote them word for word and you're not changing it, their words sound exactly like your Quran, sound like the way you speak? Hmm, interesting. All right. So understand what Islam teaches and what Muslims must believe. You have angels assigned to you to your right and left. Folks, how many of you have been to a mosque and seen how Muslims pray? Because now we're going to go into the word Islam and we're going to turn it against them. Okay. How many of you have been to, okay, 
if you've been to a mosque, you're in, you're going to see that the imam, the imam, the sheikh, will in the midst of the prayer will say assalamu alaikum. He'll turn to his right. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu. Right? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu. Again, that spiel. You know why he turns to the right and the left? Do you guys know why? He's greeting the angels. He's saying, hello, Allah, pray for you and grant you his blessing. Keep recording. You too, Allah, pray for you and grant you his blessing. They're actually greeting the angels assigned to them, right and left, or recording their good and bad. I'm not lying. Here, daughter of Christ, ex-Muslims, am I lying? Those of you who know your deen, am I lying? Munkar and Nakir, that's in the grave. Okay, guys, do you want to? You are you're in for a surprise. According to the Quran, do you know why Satan became the adversary? Do you know why Satan became the enemy of our souls, enemy of Allah? According to the Quran. According to the Quran, do you know why? Because he refused to worship Adam. Chapter 18, verse 50. Before you post it. And you know that Satan, according to the Quran, is a genie. The Quran says, Iblis, the Arabic name of Satan, is a genie who got condemned because he refused to worship Adam. Chapter 18, verse 50. Chapter 18, verse 50. And it's worship, it's sujood, sajda, where you get masjid, where you get prostration to Allah. Chapter 18, verse 50. And when we said to the angels, worship Adam. So they worship except the devil, Iblis. He was from the jinn. He was a genie. So he transgressed from the command of his Lord. Will you then take him and his offspring as friends rather than me? So shaitan, Iblis, has offspring. And they are an enemy to you. This is an evil exchange for the unjust. Satan is a genie in Islam. Chapter 18, verse 50. And Satan was condemned by Allah because he refused to bow down, <clears throat> perform sajda for Adam, a creature. Now here, here I'm confused. Muslims tell me sujood, sajda, prostration is for Allah alone. And if you prostrate to anyone besides Allah, you're committing shirk. And yet Allah is the first Mushrik, shirker, because he's commanding the heavenly host to do what Muslims say should not be done for someone other than Allah. Muslims say you cannot prostrate to anyone besides Allah, but Allah said, hey, you better prostrate to Adam, this creature, or I'll condemn you. Yeah. So the first shirker, Mushrik, the first shirker, Mushrik, was Allah. You get it? Because Allah is telling his heavenly host, see that man at Adam? Bow to him. Sajda, sujood. Uh, Allah, please don't get angry. Uh, I just want to know something. What is it? I thought sujood, prostration. Sajda, prostrate. Prostration is forbidden for anyone besides you. Yeah? And why are you now commanding them to prostrate to Adam, a creature? Isn't that sin? Oops. No, no, no. See, not all sujood is worship. It's simply showing respect. Oh, so you make up the religion as you go along. So every time you get caught, then you change your... That's why you deserve to be in hell. Yeah, kafir. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Forgive. You getting it now? The real miracle of Islam is that people think Islam is a miracle. You know that? That's the real miracle of Islam. That people think Islam is a miracle. Everyone with me there? Can you hear me? Yeah, you should be able to hear me. That's the real miracle of Islam. Okay, so Satan was a genie. He was condemned because he refused to bow down to Adam. 
And he's now become the enemy of Allah and his messenger and Muslims. So this is Islam for you. This is what Sunni Muslims believe and have to believe. Is that everyone got that? Everyone got that, right? So let's talk about the word Islam. Now we're going to have some fun. Now we're going to break it down. Now, folks, even though we're having fun and having a laugh at Allah's expense to show how stupid this religion is and that Muhammad was a deviant, a demented, spiritually demented, demonized agent of the devil, don't forget that there are 1.7 billion Muslims 1.7 billion Muslims taken captive by this religious system. There are old women who lived, who've lived rough lives. Old men who are dying. Young girls who are under this oppressive satanic system because they don't know any other way and they don't know better. So they are victims of Satan, not your enemies. Until you find one who is your enemy because no matter how much truth is presented to him or her, they still defy the truth and blaspheme God. Then you treat him as an enemy, as a dog, and let the Lord deal with him or her. Now, with that said, let me define Islam. And now, going into the Bible. Now you're going to learn your faith. Or have your faith reinforced, strengthened, and reminded of things that you already know. By the way, it's 106 minutes? Okay. Okay. Islam means submission, surrender. A Muslim is someone who submits or surrenders. Islam means submission or surrender. A Muslim is someone who submits or surrenders. According to Islamic teaching and the Quran, the religion of submission, surrender is actually the religion of Abraham. Islamic theology teaches that the first Muslim on earth, the first human Muslim, the first human Muslim was Adam. Are you with me there? Was Adam. And all prophets and messengers and all true believers, all worshipers of the one God, they're all Muslims. They're all Muslims. Because all of them sought to submit their will to the one God. But the Quran explicitly says, Islam is the religion of, of Abraham. Go to chapter 2, verse 78, because now I'm going to challenge you, and now I'm going to refute this from the Bible to bless you. And what I'm about to say ties in with yesterday's session. It directly ties in with yesterday's session where I demonstrated Jesus as Abraham's God, and Abraham saw Jesus and believed in Jesus and trusted in Jesus. All right, 22, verse 78. Yemeni, can you get out of here, brother, and go smooch the black stone if you don't like it? 22, verse 78, not 278. 22 verse 78. And ironically, you chose the very verse that talks about people who are illiterate. Is that a coincidence, Protestant? Hmm. 2278. Unlike Yusuf Estes, by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, reason defense, I try to speak the truth to the best of my ability and not lie. 2278. Yep, hit that like button. And folks, I'm doing another session later. If you're up for it, we got nothing to do. We're quarantined in the house. Let's make the most of it. Teach and preach and worship and pray. Love each other and love Jesus. 2278, read with me, guys. Read with me. God bless you all. And perform jihad in Allah, his true jihad. He elected you, and he did not place on you any hardship in the religion. The religion of your father, Abraham, he has named you the Muslims. Before and in this, that the messengers may be a witness against you and that you may be a witness witnesses against the people. So for perform prayer, perform prayer, right? <clears throat> and bring the legal alms and hold fast to Allah. He is your protector. So blessed is the protector and blessed is the helper. Did you catch it? This is the religion of Abraham. And Allah named you Muslims before and now, so the believers before you were named Muslims, and the believers after you will be named Muslims, and you're named Muslims. All believers are named Muslims because this is the religion of Abraham, the perfect Muslim. Did you guys get it now? Islam teaches that this is the religion of all the true prophets of the Bible. 
All the true prophets of the Bible, the prophets of the Old Testament, they were Muslims. Their religion was Islam. Chapter 22, verse 78. Not 278. That was a mistake. I don't know on my part or Protestant's part, but it's always Protestant's fault. And God bless him and refresh him for serving us for the sake of the Lord. Did you guys catch it? All true believers, all the prophets of the Old Testament, all the messengers of the Old Testament, including Jesus and his followers, his true followers, Muslims, their religion is Islam. The God of Abraham named them Muslims. Now let me show you another one. Chapter 3, verse 67. So we're going to have fun now. Chapter 3, verse 67. We're going to have fun. Dear Tur, there's only one real dog, and it's your mother, and she gave birth to a mutt like you. She's only real one real dog. Keep blaspheming Jesus, friend, and see what happens. All right. Chapter 3, verse 67. Watch here. Watch how they're going to set you up. Chapter 3, verse 67. Abraham was not a Jew nor a Nas Nasran Nasranian. Oh, my tongue. I have a lisp to begin with. Abraham was neither a Jew nor a Christian. Abraham was neither a Jew nor a Christian. But he was Hanifan, upright Muslim. And he was not of the polytheists. Did you catch it? You Christians, Abraham wasn't a Christian. Abraham wasn't a Jew. He was an upright Muslim. Chapter 3, verse 67. Not only was Abraham an upright Muslim, so were the disciples of Jesus Christ. Chapter 3, verse 52. The disciples of Jesus Christ, they were Muslims. They were not Christians. They were Muslims. Chapter 3, verse 52. Watch here. Yeah, guys, this is a, this is the challenge of Islam. This is the religion that we need to be interacting with and refuting it to get Muslims saved and strengthen Christians for the glory of Jesus Christ. Chapter 3, verse 52. Okay. And when Jesus per perceived their unbelief, he said, Who will be my helpers unto Allah? God, Allah. The apostle said, We will be helpers of Allah, God. We believe in Allah, God. Witness thou our submission. Witness that we are Muslims. We are Muslims. So wait, Peter said he was a Muslim. Thomas said he was a Muslim. John said he was a Muslim. Matthew said he was a Muslim, according to the Quran. I wanted to sink in for a minute. Abraham was a Muslim. Abraham's religion was Islam. Jesus' followers, disciples were Muslims. Everyone was a Muslim. It's your parents that make you a Jew or Christian or Hindu. Or an atheist. Are you there? Okay. Now they're going to use the Bible to prove to you the Bible teaches Islam is the religion of God. Are you ready? Because now we're going to refute and we're going to answer the question, what was the religion of the true servants of God? Okay, are you now ready? And then we're going to end it. We'll do a part two. Okay. They'll tell you the Bible proves they're all Muslims. You know why? The Bible says you need to submit to God's will. Because what does Islam mean? Islam means submission or surrender. Submission or surrender. Submit, surrender to what? To the will of God. If you submit to the one God, submit to his will, you are a Muslim whether you like it or not. So let's go to James 4, verses 7 to 8. James 4, verses 7 to 8. Thank you, Rebel. God bless you for your support. Thank you all. James 4, verses 7 to 8. Watch here. Exactly, Turb. Turb, beautiful. Turb just said something. If, if, if Islam teaches we're all born Muslim... But we left Islam. That means we're apostates and we should be killed. That's the logic of Islam. Beautiful. But James chapter 4, verses 7 to 8. Anonymous, don't debate me on this. It can mean submission and surrender because words have a broad range of meaning. Don't debate me on this, please. Don't start. Brother, just listen and benefit. James 4, 7 to 8. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. 
Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit yourselves therefore to God. There's that word submission. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So notice James says, submit, surrender to, the, to God. How many gods do you submit, surrender to, James? James 2.19. James 2.19. James 2, verse 19. Okay, let's hear the, this is the Bible, so it shouldn't be as hard for you to quote the Bible. James 2.19. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. So wait. James says there's one God. Allahu Ahad. Allahu Wahid. One God. Submit, surrender to that one God. That's Islam. There's Islam in your Bible. There is Islam in your Bible. One God. Submit, surrender to that one God. Man, I got you, Christian. Booyah! Slam right there in your face. But let's see what Jesus says. Matthew 7, 21. Matthew 7, 21. Yeah, they got you. And these are passages they quote. I'm not making it up. Listen to their lectures, debates with Christians. They point to these passages. Matthew 7, 21. But wait, I'm going to show you how to refute them. Show you how to refute them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Bam! Got you, Christian. If you say Jesus is Lord, you ain't going to heaven, but you need to do the will of the Father. See, that's a slam. Mark 3.35. Mark 3.35. And we're going to begin the refutation. Mark 3.35, and we're going to begin the refutation. We'll get there, Mickey. Yep, you're seeing out a refute. Oh, wait. For whosoever does the will of God. Ah, Mickey. Jesus said, whoever does the will of God. But here it's God. The earliest gospel says God. Matthew changed it. Matthew changed Jesus' words to Father, whereas in Mark, he says God. Mark 3.35. Whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. Ah, oh, alhamdulillah. Mark 3.35, the first gospel before Matthew changed it. Jesus says, if you do the will of God, you are my, my brother, my sister, my mother. You are my brother in iman and deen. Allahu Akbar. That's it. Mark told you to become Muslim. Are we now, are we now ready to refute them? using? Remember, once they quote the Bible, say so you're stuck with it. Anytime you quote a particular verse from a, a particular author of the Bible, now I'm going to have to use that same source to show why Islam is false. Are you ready? Who's ready now? Who's ready? Okay. According to Mark, what is the will of God? Mark 3.35. Let's read it again. Mark 3.35. If you do the will of God, if you do the will of God, you are my brother, my mother, my sister. For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same as my brother, my sister, and my mother. Okay, uh, Mark, what is God's will? Mark 9, verse 7. Mark 9, verse 7. Mark 9, verse 7. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. This is God's will. Obey, listen to his beloved son, Jesus Christ. So much for Muhammad and Islam. Mark 9, verse 7. This is my beloved son, hear him. Hear him. You want to do what my will? Obey my son whom I love. Hear my son whom I love. So much for Muhammad and Islam. So thank you, Muslim, for quoting Mark and Matthew. Because now Mark and Matthew prove Muhammad is an antichrist, a false prophet, and that he preached a corrupt Islam, not the true Islam. Not only don't they hear Jesus, AI debunker, they don't believe Jesus is God's beloved son. 
They don't believe Jesus is God's beloved son. But Thomas Yo, they can't say that because they quoted Mark. Wait, you quoted Mark. So Mark is now corrupt? Stop. And by the way, I told you about that Muslim apologist in France that I debated. I had two debates with him. Al Hanafi was his name. What was his full name? In the second debate, it's online. I speak English, but they translate it in French. You'll see it. We're sitting on a table. I did exactly this. Karim Al Hanafi. Thank you. They were quoting verses. I go, hold on. You just quoted First John. Let me finish First John. First John says Jesus is the true God, eternal life, the Son of God, His beloved. All of which prove that Islam is false. Muhammad is an antichrist. Why did you quote it? They got so discombobulated, so shaken, that Karim and Halafi, you'll see it in the debate. He checked out. He was no longer engaged in the debate. He started writing. I was watching. He was started writing on his pad shapes. He was drawing circles and squares. He checked out. He couldn't handle it anymore. He checked out. Because every time they quoted a verse from the Bible to prove it's Islam, I said, wait, you quoted First John. You mean the first John that says Jesus is God's beloved son who offered his life as a sacrifice for our sins to atone for us? Who's the true God? That first John? And this proves Muhammad is what? It says he's an antichrist. Oh, you quoted Mark? That's what I did all throughout the debate. Go watch it. Glory to the chime God. They didn't know what hit them. And he checked out. You'll see it in the video. So you know I'm not lying. You'll see him just drawing. What am I trying to get at? Folks, folks, trust me when I say, I think I've earned your trust over the years as the Holy Spirit has used me in your life for the glory of Christ. Trust me, and I'm going to sound like a broken record. If you learn these arguments, if you learn these arguments and you absorb these arguments and make it second nature, no one will be able to refute your faith and misuse the Bible and pervert it. No one. If you learn your faith, learn the Bible, ask the Spirit to guide you, absorb this information, make it second nature, and then use it to glorify King Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay, now, let's use James against them. So you quoted James, huh? All right. James 1, verse 1. James 1, verse 1. No, I did say the Holy Spirit, Christo Anesti. Pray the Holy Spirit. I'll never leave him out. I'll leave you out, Christo Anesti, but not the Holy Spirit, you little sinner. James 1, verse 1. Let's use, remember they quoted James. We're going to use James against them. James against them. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, abroad greeting. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Guys, this is what you tell the Muslim. When James wrote this letter, Jesus wasn't on earth. Jesus was in heaven. They'll agree. Jesus is in heaven. James said that he is not just the servant of God, but of the Lord Jesus Christ, and calls Jesus Lord and says that though Jesus is in heaven, I'm still his servant on earth, and he's my Lord in heaven. So you have God the Father, God, Jesus Christ, both in heaven, and James says, I'm the servant of God and Jesus, who's my Lord. And this is compatible with Islam? This agrees with Islam? No, it doesn't. Because in chapter 3, verses 79 to 80 of the Quran, chapter 3, verses 79 to 80, let me read this. Chapter 3, verses 79 to 80. I'm going to get it for the sake of time. Here's what it says. Watch here. Chapter 3, verses 79 to 80. It is not possible. Chapter 3 of the Quran, verses 79 to 80. It is not possible for any human being to whom Allah has given the book and al-hikmah, knowledge, wisdom, and the prophethood. It's not possible for any person who's received wisdom and the prophethood from Allah to say to the people, be my servants, servants, serve me rather than Allah. On the contrary, he would say, be you teachers because you are teaching the book and you're studying it. Now notice verse 80, verse 80. 
nor would he order you to take angels and prophets for lords. He would not order you to look to a prophet as your Lord. Would he order you to disbelief after you have submitted to Allah's will? Okay, Christians, help me to understand. I'm a little confused. The Quran says, no prophet will say, serve me. And Allah will never command one of his servants to look to a prophet as his Lord. But James 1.1, 1, 1, folks, James 1.1, 1, 1, James says, I am the servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm on earth. Jesus is in heaven. And in heaven, Jesus is my Lord. I serve him with God. Do you see what happened to Islam right now? You see what I just did to Islam? You see how the very book of James destroys Islam and exposes Muhammad as a false prophet? Did you catch it or no? Before I move on. Okay. And then chapter 25, verse 2 of the Quran. Chapter 25, verse 2. Chapter 25, verse 2 of the Quran. He to whom belongs the dominion of the heaven and earth, he has not begotten a son. He has begotten no son. And for him there is no partner in the dominion. He has created everything, and he has measured it exactly according to its due measurement. So chapter 25, verse 2 of the Quran says, Allah has no begotten son, and he has no partner in his rule. But wait. James says, Jesus is God's partner in heaven, which is why he can be my Lord and I'm his servant. So wait, James. How many persons are your Lord in heaven? Two, God and Jesus Christ. So if Jesus is Lord in heaven, that means he shares in God's authority over you on earth. Yes. How many do you serve in heaven? God and Jesus Christ. But James, I thought you told me to become Muslim. I thought you said become Muslim. Don't you know, James, in the Quran it says, you can't take a prophet as your Lord, and you can't serve anyone else besides Allah as your Lord, and Allah has no partner's dominion in heaven. But you said Jesus is God's partner in his dominion in heaven. Jesus is your Lord, and you're a servant. Riaz, don't go to Psalm 110 if they're quoting James. You understand what I'm teaching you? I'm teaching you to use the very book or author that they're quoting against them. You see what I just did? Is that clear or no? Before I move on. Okay. But then James 2, 1. God, God bless you guys for your support. James 2, verse 1. Almost done with this session. James 2, verse 1. James 2, verse 1. Exactly, Jojo Monster. You got it, sister. God bless you. James 2, verse 1. BMW, this is going to even destroy them more. I, brother, which part of James 2, verse 1 wasn't clear? The two or the one? Poor guy is shutting down again. My goodness, age is catching up on him. James 2, verse 1. Okay. James 2, verse 1. Watch here. Okay. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to persons. Wait, wait, wait. James, Jesus is all believers' Lord. He's the Lord of all believers. And he's the Lord of glory, the Lord who's glorious in heaven. So Jesus is the Lord of all true believers. That's true iman, true faith. And he's the Lord who is glorious, who possesses glory in heaven? Yes. But Islam says Jesus is not Lord. And Jesus is not the glorious Lord. The Lord who possesses glory in heaven. And I thought you told me to become Muslim. Where would you get that from? Oh, the followers of Muhammad. They told me that you just said become Muslim. You see what just happened? You quote that to a Muslim and say, I want you to say, and I'm going to record you and put it on YouTube and Facebook. I want you to say, I, Muslim, confess with James, Jesus is our Lord, my Lord. I'm the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's the Lord of glory. Say that. I want to record it, post it on social media.
Now, yes, it is Nicholas, Nicola Suduta Gerontius. The word is Yaakov in Hebrew and ya Yaakobos, Yaakob, ya the Greek, oh, the Greek. I can't speak English, guys. James is actually Jacob, Yaakov in Hebrew and Yaakobus, Yaakob, Yaakobus, Yaakobus in Greek. It's Jacob. Okay, final one for now. We're going to do a part two. James 2, verses 21 to 23. James 2, verses 21 to 23. Yeah. Uh, Al debunker, James is actually Jacob. The Hebrew is Yaakov, and in Greek it would be Yaakobus. Yaakobus. Okay. Don't. Okay. James 2 21 to 23. Read with me. Was not Abraham our father? justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar Abraham offered Isaac upon the altar seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect and the scripture was fulfilled which saith Abraham believed God it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God so a Muslim who did Abraham offer up as a sacrifice Ishmael alayhi salam James says you're a liar. What? James said it was Isaac. Abraham offered up Isaac. So if James is right, you're wrong. It's Isaac, not Ishmael. And if James is right, your prophet is wrong and your crown is corrupt because true Islam is submitting, surrendering to God the Father and Jesus Christ, serving and worshiping God the Father and Jesus Christ, and acknowledging and confessing Jesus is Lord in heaven, the Lord of all true believers, the glorious Lord who possesses glory and shares in God's rule. That's true Islam according to James. That's true Islam according to James. Now, part one of this is done. Lord willing, I'm going to do a part two. Now, in part two, I'm going to explain from the Bible what was the religion of the prophets. Since it's not Islam, what was it? But here's the thing. I want to do another session in a few hours. Either I can do a live Q&A, open Skype, or I can do part two and then open up for about 10 minutes of questions at the end. Do you want me to do part two? What was the religion of the prophets according to the Bible? What was their faith? What was it called? Or do you want me to do Q&A? If you want me to do part two, say part two. Q&A, put Q&A. Morning, Call me, say how you doing. All right. All right, then. Part two it is. Part two it is. What was the religion of the prophets? Okay, my time, it's a quarter to four. Quarter to four. Lord willing, we will go live 5 p.m. 5 p.m., which is 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. New York Time. So we're going to go live, God willing, in one hour and 15 minutes. All right? One hour, 15 minutes. Come back. Good crowd. This whole week, we've had over 140, 150, 160. Pray. I want more people. And I hope it blessed you guys. Okay? Christ is risen, risen indeed. See you in an hour and 15 minutes, Lord willing. Part two.